I don't know your particular situation, but if you're like most women, you probably didn't have a dad or a big brother who told you the truth about men and dating. So you've done the best with what you have, but I'd be willing to bet if you're watching this video, you've experienced more pain than you'd like. So what I want to do today is have a heart to heart with you where I share seven vital lessons about men that I had shared with you if you were my sister, so you can avoid a lot of heartbreak and meet a man who loves you and values you immensely. I'm gonna shift to you straight. If you're watching this video, you already know that there's lots of men out there who only want to have sex with you. There's gonna be lots of guys who are confused about their purpose in life. There's gonna be guys who want something mixed, mixed signals. They seem to want something serious, but they also want a situation ship. It's like the worst of both worlds for you. You'll also find guys who are controlling and abusive. To top it all off, as if that weren't enough challenges, there are more conscious, self-aware, inspiring women right now who want and seek this type of emotionally connected relationship than guys out there to fulfill those roles. So I'm not trying to make you think that this is not possible. On the contrary, my approach as a relationship coach who's helped so many women attract the guy they want for the first time in their lives is not how do you change the world, but how do you act your best part? So irrespective of the challenges out there, you can still get what you want. And before I share my seven lessons, if you get to take one thing out of this video is that the number one factor that will determine if you get this and how quickly you get this, given all the constraints, is your consistent emotional state. The emotional state you embody consistently will determine if you get this or don't get it. If you stand out, if you can surpass all obstacles and still be the woman most guys want to choose, or if you're contending with fighting for scraps, which is the opposite of what I want you to experience. There's a mentor I learned many years ago, this message from, and it changed my life. And he said, show me your state and I will show you your future. So is it going to be the version of you that's excited, forward thinking, alive, passionate, confident, or the version of you that is burnt out, who is not confident, who is jaded, who is slightly cynical? What version of you is going to show up to play, to connect, and to create this? Now, the first thing I need you to know about men is that guys who are worth it to you, guys who are not just some hot dude that you think is cool, but it's not really cool for you. Guys who are really worth it for you, quality men, will wait and slow it down for you because they understand that the risk is mostly on you. The risk of physical connection, the risk of sexual connection is going to be much higher for you than for him. So if a guy is willing to slow it down for you because you ask him to, because that's what you need to feel safer, because that's what you need to develop emotional connection before you open up to that physical connection then he's not going to love it necessarily. He's not going to even suggest it as the first proposition, but he'll say yes. And the reason why it's so important for you to understand this right now is because if a guy doesn't say yes to that, that isn't a problem. It's a symptom. The symptom is lack of consciousness. The real problem is he can't delay gratification. He doesn't understand the difference between selflessness and selfishness. So you want to connect to a guy who gets it. As I said, he may not love it, but if you set that boundary, he's willing to step up and do the right thing so he gets a chance to develop that intimacy with you first in the heart and then in the body. The second lesson, sister, I need for you to know is that he will never respect you if you're flaky on your boundaries. And I want to distill this into two different parts. The first thing that needs to happen is you need to understand what boundaries you have. Sometimes women don't get disrespected because they can't enforce their boundaries. They can't enforce them because they don't know what they are. So I need for you to take some time and it's really worth pausing dating to think about this. What are your boundaries for you to feel safe to date a guy? Like what questions do you need to know before you go out on a date with them? What are the boundaries you need to set for physical contact? What are the boundaries you need to set for sexual contact? What are the boundaries you need to set to be in an exclusive relationship with someone? What are the boundaries you need to set if you were to move it to all the way into a life commitment. And it builds gradually one from the other. But I'm here to say that guys sometimes can respect boundaries, but they can't respect the boundaries they don't understand. Some guys you'll be surprised who show up in a specific way when you say, that's not how I do it. If you want to do it this way, I may be game for that. Might show up differently. So the standard should be if a guy shows up in a way that's not what you expect, instead of thinking he should know better, saying, here's exactly what I'm needing. 
can you do this? And if he does it, maybe continue exploring it. If he says no, then let him go. Don't confuse physical connection. Don't confuse what your stars are telling you. Don't confuse what your heart is saying. Even if your heart is shouting to the seven winds, he's your soulmate. If he is not willing to be respectful, then he's not your soulmate. He's just some dude you feel lost for. <laughs> Even though you're trying to convince yourself, it's something else. Number three, he needs to be vulnerable to have skin in the game. What does that mean? He needs to be willing and able, and I'm not saying without guidance or without your prompts, but to go inside his heart and share. What is he about? What does he love? What does he hate? We share about his past. Share, share what really makes him move. Share things that make you see the totality of him, not just the good parts and the stoic parts of him, but the things that make him feel. If a guy can't express his feelings, even after asking good questions, if a guy is unwilling or unable to share what's going on inside this world, it's going to be very unlikely for him to have skin in the game. And by skin in the game, I mean the kind of guy who maybe when he connects with you physically, and so bleeding from one day to the next because he never had the emotional connection to begin with. So as you explore connecting with men, pay close attention to how able they are to express what they think, what they feel, to share things that make him feel vulnerable as you do the same thing. When there's a back and forth, that reciprocation creates strong emotional connection, creates the willingness in him to go forward. If he's not sharing that, and there's many reasons why we're not here to judge him, but if he can't do that, then you're taking a big risk on yourself. The fourth lesson that I need to learn is that a guy can control you or love you, but not both. Sometimes women, when they are connecting to a guy in something that feels passionate and exciting and hot and sexy, confuse control with protection or control with passion or control with, he just wants me so much. And that's why he's saying these things. No, no, no. If a guy is telling you what to do and how to do it, that's control. If a guy is manipulating you, that's a form of control. He might have ideas about how you can do things differently. And if he's humble enough to say, here's what I see, here's some suggestions, he might take them in or not. He might have some great suggestions, but there's a difference between him suggesting something and him telling you how you have to do things. So understand that if a guy is controlling you, the love is being sucked out of the equation and the more control, the less love. Now, before I share my last three points, which are incredibly valuable for you, I don't want you to miss out on them. If you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not fully aware of the root cause, not the symptoms, but you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, and help them to attract the love of their lives and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will take into consideration everything I've learned and share with you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in about 60 seconds, you have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a custom report It's going to share based on your specific blind spot. What is the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want in a small fraction of the time? Lesson number five, he won't commit if he can't feel how you need him. I'm talking to anyone right now who is flagging the big flag of fiercely independent. Here's the truth. Fiercely independent is superior to codependent. It's superior to being in a dependent situation by far. If you want a relationship, it's not superior than being interdependent. So if you're someone who's convinced yourself, I don't need a man, don't be with a man. Because if you can feel all your needs without being in the relationship, you're going to suffer a lot less if you do them on your own. Now, if you're recognizing in a humble way that you can have a life with the right partner that's exponentially, not a little bit, exponentially more juicy, exponentially more connected, exponentially more allied, exponentially more vulnerable, exponentially more seen and witnessed than you can on your own, then have the courage to express it to him. If he understands in clear, healthy ways how you need him, he's going to be far more likely to commit to you, far more likely to do what it takes, far more likely to be protective in the best of ways than if you're holding your cards close to your chest and not revealing what that's like. Because trust me, he needs that to be able to make that commitment. Just like you probably want to hear from him how he needs you. That's part of growing in a relationship. That's understanding that in a healthy relationship, one plus one is not two, is three or four or five. The sixth lesson I want you to understand is that emotional bruises hurt as much, sometimes more than physical bruises. So what I mean by that is if a guy is 
punching you emotionally, if he's being emotionally abusive, even undertones of that, you need to really put a stop to that because abuse that is not stopped only grows. So if a guy is calling you names, that's abuse. If a guy is trying to control you, that's abuse. If a guy is demeaning you or trying to shame you, that's abuse. If a guy is trying to manipulate you, that's abuse. If a guy is telling you how you will never find someone better than him and he's trying his hardest to get you to comply to his version of the world versus understanding that you have your own right to have your own version of the world, that's abuse, emotional abuse. So what you want to do is really take a step back if you notice that something like that is happening and do not try to tell yourself that this is going to take care of itself because it won't. It will only get worse if you don't put a stop to it. That doesn't mean that things can change or get better, but you do need to take the time to acknowledge it, recognize it, work on it, call it out, take some space if needed, get help, or it won't get better. The last thing I want to share with you right now is that inspiration works far more powerfully than games, than manipulation, than trying to trick him into anything. I heard a quote once that really changed my way of looking at this. And it's by the guy who wrote The Little Prince. And he said something along the lines of, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the vast immensity of the sea. So what does that mean? You showing up at your most radiant, you showing up as the highest version of you, not for him, for yourself, coupled with having strong boundaries. So strong magnet, plus strong boundaries creates him wanting to connect with you, him wanting to commit, and he doesn't want to commit. When you show up this way, then you have some understanding about how to move forward, but showing up this way is crucial. Showing up this way is key. This works far stronger than ultimatums. This works far stronger than trying to get him to do certain things. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel, because this is how I can grow and reach more women who need this help. If you click like and subscribe, if you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or stupid techniques, you can watch the next video right here. And if you know that there's someone who needs this message, please send it their way.